On the 22nd of March, 2022, Elon Musk announced that Tesla is working on a new manganese battery cell. However, we know that Tesla has been working on using manganese in its battery cells now for more than five years. And there's a key reason for this. Manganese, it's believed now by most experts, is the key to unlocking higher energy density and lower priced batteries. In fact, battery companies in China, some of the biggest in the world, believe Tesla was correct. Elon Musk was on the right track. And the future of the automotive industry actually lies in a new hybrid type battery, a combination of some of the most popular batteries in the world that Tesla are currently using and a revolutionary new way of combining old school battery chemistry with new school componentry. This is the game changer battery technology. It is the best technology for batteries we have seen in the last 20 years. Hands down, this is the battery technology of the future thanks to the decrease in the cost of lithium this year and the decrease in the production costs of this new battery technology and the fact that companies are now actually producing them big time, they've just started. I believe these batteries will change the entire automotive industry and there's three key reasons why. This video is not clickbait, it's 100% legitimate. I believe this battery 100% is the game changer in the industry and by the end of the decade will be the predominant battery. If you're not using these batteries in your car, people will be saying to you, why? Why aren't you? It doesn't make sense. Analysts worldwide, they're getting a little bit concerned, getting a little bit worried that China has a new battery breakthrough, which the rest of the world just won't be able to compete with. What I mean by this is this new battery breakthrough enables them to make better batteries at a lower price than everyone else outside of China. And it may actually be true that they have done this. They have basically developed this technology that they've been working on for years. Why do I say this? Well, the reason I say this is because, well, for one, Elon Musk and Tesla themselves, they have both, and Jeff Dahn, who also works on research in battery development for Tesla, the three of them together have all said that this technology is the future of car batteries, of EV batteries, and it is the solution to making batteries more energy dense, and not only more energy dense, but also more affordable. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. What this all means is that China's electric vehicle sector is preparing for a new breakthrough, as if they didn't have enough already. I mean, this is just adding insult to injury or injury to insult depends on how you want to look at that expression hey the key point here is china just hit a new record in ev sales ev sales hit 37 percent in the month of may 37 percent of all car sales in china were electric right most of those batteries in fact no not most of them all of those batteries were manufactured in china it's the world's biggest car market around 60 percent of the electric cars made worldwide are made in China using Chinese batteries. China owns a staggering percentage of the global battery market. In fact, I would say they have a monopoly. And it's not just me saying this. China's president says this as well. In fact, he made that exact statement only a few months ago. Whilst China's EV battery sector is preparing a new breakthrough, a top Chinese battery maker thinks it has cracked a technology to provide cheaper and more powerful battery packs for electric vehicles. But it's not the only one. What do I mean by it's not the only one? Well, it's not the only battery company to say it has cracked a breakthrough. And when I say cracked a breakthrough, this is not some kind of, uh, we, we theoretically think we can do this. We made this cell in the laboratory. It looks amazing. It does this amazing stuff. I'm talking about actual production product. I'm talking about stuff like the batteries from CATL, the cheer-in battery that's already in EVs now, as of, in fact, it's been on sale now for a few weeks, being delivered to customers with a range of a thousand kilometers in an EV that's relatively affordable. What's most intriguing about all of this though is that Goshan High Tech, the battery claiming it has this new breakthrough, is owned in part, in significant part, in fact, 25% ownership of this company 
is in the hands of the Volkswagen Group. And they are making, on Goshan High Tech, which is technically still a Chinese battery company, they are building two new mega battery factories in the United States to produce these exact batteries. Goshan High Tech recently unveiled a lithium iron manganese phosphate battery, which is called LMFP for short. And I've talked about these batteries on the channel before a number of times and why these batteries are 100% the future of the automotive industry. That's why Elon Musk has even said the same thing himself. Goshan say they will power an EV for 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles on a single charge, but without being massive. The battery pack doesn't need to be 200 kilowatt hours in size to give you that kind of range. We're talking about more like a 120 kilowatt hour battery pack to give an EV a range of 1,000 kilometers. What that means is, say, a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack might give you 500 kilometers of range or possibly even more than that, more likely about 600 kilometers, which is a decent, in fact, a very good range. That means you'll be looking at well over 300 miles of range in an affordable battery pack. The key here is affordable. These battery packs are more affordable than so-called high energy density lithium ternary battery packs from LG Chem, right? LG Energy Solutions, SK On, Korean battery companies that make batteries for General Motors, Volkswagen Group, etc. My key point is, until now, it's largely the more expensive nickel cobalt batteries that have provided that kind of range. Say, for example, like Tesla's 2170 or 4680 battery cells. It's an upgrade. It's a leap for energy density. Chang Chan, executive president of Goshan's International Business Unit, said in a phone interview from Tokyo, and boy, he is absolutely right. There is no false claims being made here. Goshan's offering adds manganese to existing lithium iron phosphate chemistry that was commercialized in China and it's been adopted by major EV makers from BYD to Tesla as a method of cutting the cost of their vehicles. Improvements in lithium ion phosphate battery packs enable more power and safer batteries that are going into smaller sizes, say for example with BYD's Blade battery, and this has helped popularize the batteries, which are obviously significantly cheaper to manufacture. And what's how popular is the batteries is probably if anything, Tesla more than anyone else, probably number one, Tesla number two, BYD. But really, Tesla used this strategy of putting these batteries in their cars to reduce its costs significantly, not only its upfront costs, but also its long-term costs. These batteries are much less likely to have set themselves on fire or to malfunction in any way. We've seen that over the last two years. There's been very few battery problems with Tesla's base model cars. They're by far the most popular vehicles they sell. They make up more than 60% of all Tesla sales. Now, lithium ion phosphate battery packs, and they have less recalls, less issues, plus they're cheaper to buy. I mean, it's a win-win, not only for Tesla, but it's a win-win for the consumer. Of course, BYD vehicles have now become very popular as well, and they use primarily blade batteries utilizing lithium ion phosphate technology. It was only about five years ago when analysts were saying these batteries just wouldn't work in EVs, they didn't have enough energy density, they're only going to ever work for cars with maybe you know 150 miles of range, maximum 200, wouldn't really work, most companies shouldn't use them, blah, 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 short-term thinking, didn't make sense in the long term, just was the sort of thing where it was like, well, it applies today, so therefore it must apply in five years' time. This kind of narrow-minded thinking that doesn't account for what has been happening now for many years, which is continual improvements to battery packs, continual improvements to energy density, meant that most automakers missed the boat. I mean, how many automakers are using lithium-ion phosphate batteries in their EVs? Almost none of the car companies that the average person knows about. Basically, Tesla is the only one outside of China that uses them now until the Mustang Mach-E, which came out a few weeks ago with lithium-ion phosphate batteries as well. LFP batteries almost hit a ceiling of energy density at 190 watts per kilo, Cheng said. So that was perceived to be the limit. However, Goshuan's new battery achieves 240 watts per kilo. Other Chinese companies 
with similarly higher energy density LFP batteries. It's not only Goshon, by the way, that is going to be putting manganese into its LFP batteries. It's other Chinese companies as well say they can achieve around 230 watts per kilo, pretty similar to Goshon's numbers. That means it can store more energy in every battery cell, minimizing the weight and making the battery pack smaller. So it's a double benefit, which will significantly improve the range of the vehicles that have these battery packs. But the thing is, it's not actually more expensive to produce these batteries. That's the game-changing part of this entire equation. It's actually cheaper. Why? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute. This innovation highlights how battery technology and raw materials are still evolving and unpredictable as the world's automakers are trying to slash the cost while boosting EV performance. It shows how Chinese companies continue to pioneer these advances. And this comes at a time when General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis, their CEOs have all said within the last short, narrow period of time that they don't believe they can make EVs at a profit within the next five to 10 years, or at least they don't believe they can make a profit on EVs that are affordable within five to 10 years from a 30 to 40,000 US dollar price range. Tesla are saying the opposite. Why? Because it's planning on using these exact batteries. In fact, Volkswagen Group is saying the opposite as well. Why? Because, well, they own a percentage of Ghost on High Tech. They're planning on using these batteries too. So the key reason, and the reason these batteries are actually going to be cheaper than lithium ion phosphate batteries that are available today and that are much and that are far inferior to these is because adding manganese to the battery allows these companies to put less lithium into the pack that's the biggest advantage here so the lithium component is the most expensive component to the battery pack refined Battery grade lithium is quite expensive, even though the price have come down drastically this year by nearly 60%, still very expensive product part of the battery. So putting manganese in means far less lithium is needed because that's one of the reasons that LFP batteries are not cheaper than they already are. The amount of lithium needed is higher than what is needed in a nickel-based chemistry battery like Tesla's 4680 battery cells. Goshon is listed in Shenzhen and expects that LMFP batteries will cost 5% less than conventional LFP batteries in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour. That would be as much as 20 to 25% cheaper than a nickel cobalt battery. So not only will it be much cheaper than one of those batteries, but that energy density is actually higher than most current batteries on the market. For example, the battery packs that General Motors use in its so-called Ultium battery packs, have a lower energy density, and yet they're at least 25% more expensive. The LMFP battery can replace some of the industry's nickel cobalt cells with the same performance, if not better, but lower costs and better safety, said the CEO of Goshon High Tech. Now, LMFP technology is not actually new, but commercializing it, that is. Traditionally, the cells are not used in EV applications for reasons from low conductivity to high temperature dissolution or low density. Goshon said its battery, which it calls Astronomo, has overcome these technical challenges. Goshon's manganese added cells will create real opportunity to compete with some NCM chemistries where standard LFP struggles to compete on energy density said Victoria Hugel, battery research analyst at London-based consultancy Rowmotion. LMFP could take a 6% market share by 2040, likely surpassing other emerging options like sodium ion batteries, she said. Now, I don't believe what Victoria Hugel is saying at all. I think it's utter baloney nonsense, complete garbage, like 6%. That's ridiculous. LFP batteries already comprise, <laughs> they already comprise nearly 50% of the world's lithium battery production. In fact, I think it's about 50% as of uh, within the last few weeks. So what it's going to fall from 50 down to 6. Utter baloney. The thing is, as if you would buy lithium ion phosphate batteries when these are cheaper and they, <laughs> they have all the benefits of lithium ion phosphate batteries and they're 5% cheaper with a much higher energy density. 
completely ridiculous comment that they're going to go down to 6% from 50 when obviously 50% is their natural their natural figure that they'll hit very, very quickly within the, probably the next decade. But they'll hit more than that. That's the reality here because now that we've seen lithium prices stabilize and come down significantly, these battery packs will be very, very affordable, incredibly affordable, and they make actually much more sense than a sodium ion battery at today's prices. Put it this way, right? Tesla are now using lithium ion phosphate batteries in both the Model 3 Performance, the Model 3 Long Range, and the Model 3 Standard Range, plus the same in the Model Ys or models for Canadian electric cars. We don't know if they've done that in other countries yet, but we know that's happened in Canada recently. They're still getting very good range. They're getting more range in their battery packs, which are smaller than competitors using ternary batteries. That's using lithium ion phosphate. So somehow Tesla in these so-called lower energy density batteries gets more range in cars with smaller battery packs than their competition using nickel-based chemistry batteries. So imagine if you increase the energy density of those Tesla vehicle battery packs by 20%. That is insane because not only are you increasing the energy density, you can then decrease the weight of the packs by making the battery smaller, all of a sudden, Tesla has more margin to play with. Cheaper packs, high energy density, and you have an absolute game changer because the combined effect of those two things is more than one plus one. It's not like one plus one equals two. This is more like a one plus one equals three. So when are these batteries going to be produced? Well, very, very quickly. Astronomo batteries will be in mass production in the second quarter of this year according to Goshan High Tech. They've passed safety tests and LMFP batteries will be manufactured in two plants in China's Anhui province. Goshan has been ramping up overseas expansions from planning a battery plant in Michigan to raising a global depository receipt offering in Switzerland last year. The company was the world's eighth largest battery manufacturer last year. However, it's grown since then significantly. However, there's one other thing I haven't talked about yet, which could mean this battery is far better than what I've just said. The company says the battery has the ability to fast charge in just over 15 minutes. Now, we don't know what that means. We don't know what kind of fast charging that is. They haven't actually revealed what speed they're talking about here. But if it fast charges in just over 15 minutes from the, say, the industry standard of 20 to 80%, depending on the battery pack size, that could be another game changer. Well, actually, maybe not a game changer, but if you put it all together, fast charging, the improvements in energy density, and the decreases in price, those three factors mean this could be the battery innovation of the decade. Seriously, that is very objectively true. Here's exactly what they said. You can have a cup of coffee and rest at the charging station, and the battery will be charged from 10% to 80% within 18 minutes using step charging. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.